Dave Rogers may not be a household name in the world of rugby media, but if you've ever opened a newspaper or browsed the internet, you'll be very familiar with his work. Over the best part of four decades, the Englishman has been one of the leading rugby photographers in the world. 79 was the first big rugby match. I and mean, it was in those days, Leicester on Boxing Day used to play the Barbarians, and the Barbarians always sent a really good team. And uh, then I got sent on the 1980 Lions tour to South Africa for three, over three months, which was fantastic. I had a great time there. The players were fantastic too. I mean, we, you actually became almost part of the team in those days, joined the players for everything they did. Fantastic time we had. It was easier in the old days to build relationships with players and managers because you did tour with them and became part of the group. And they welcomed you a lot more than they do now. Um, I do think there's a slight divide now between the media and, and, and the, the players themselves and coaches. So it is increasingly becoming more and more difficult. The whole thing's about trust. If they trust you, and hopefully they do, because they wouldn't let me in the first place, but when they get to know you quite well and they know you won't, for want of a better phrase, stitch them up, um, you know, it's, it's all about trust, because you, you are privileged. You do hear and see things that the general public do not hear and see. Having worked on every Rugby World Cup as well as nine Lions tours, Rogers knows better than most what it takes to capture the perfect shot. You're trying to keep an eye on what's going on behind you for a start. You have to keep an eye on the coaches and the replacements and what their reactions are. And if you're running up and down, which I do here at Twickenham quite a lot, sometimes you're spending most of the time going backwards and forwards. And you do, you have to try and keep up with the player as much as you can. So you do miss it. It's not like watching the game through just your normal eyes. With the lens in front, it's a very narrow vision. I do like the picture that encapsulates the, the whole spirit of the game for a start. I do like a good action photo. And, and if, you, if you combine it with superb light, uh, just, it just throws itself out of the page. And it looks fantastic when it's blown up. A really good still photo, I think, is, is wonderful still to look at. Two of my favorite photos are actually taken on the same day, 2003, Johnny's drop goal. We were lucky there, because Extra time, last seconds of the match, we just knew something was going to happen. Johnny was getting teed up by Matt Dawson and Martin Johnson for the big drop goal. We were all uh, worried because it usually kicks with his left foot, but for some reason, which was great for us, he turned around, he swivelled around and faced us and kicked with his right leg, which was fantastic. Because if not, all we would have seen was his backside and we've had nothing at all of Johnny Wilkinson's great drop goal. And then Walking down the, in the dressing room, I turned around and there was um, Clive Woodward uh, carrying the World Cup trophy with all the crowd leaning over the tunnel, going mad, slapping them on the back, the ones who could reach. And he was holding the trophy up towards them and it was just an incredible occasion. To, and to go in the dressing room, as I said before, was just, as an Englishman, it was superb. I love it. I'll, I'll probably miss the job when it's gone. I know I will. My wife says I will miss it. And I just like being around the, the big occasions and, and even the small occasions. I like going to small grounds too and seeing, and seeing the guys working out there and you know, playing the game and that sort of stuff. Hopefully a few more years yet, a few more, a few more miles in the tank, hopefully, with a bit of luck. And uh, I hope it continues. <laughs>